Uh, my name is David Nealon, and uh, some of the things I'm the director of my business school, I University here in Turkey. And, uh, I know you want to hear Andrew Hoja, so I'm just going to quickly go through this and tell you a little bit about who we are and what we do. Uh, I the University, we're a university in Spain, in Madrid, and we have a campus in Segovia, which is just outside of Madrid, about half an hour with the fast train. Uh, I'll just quickly tell you a little bit about me. I'm a Canadian. But I've been living in Turkey for about 15 years. Uh, communication consultancy, I'm very similar to a typical profile in IE, which is international, lived abroad, working in quite a few different things. So I also do consulting work with the African Development Bank. And through my company, I'm the director of IE Business School. So my job is to do events to bring awareness of the university and, of course, talk to any potential students. I'm going to review a bunch of this very quickly. Uh, I, the university, was founded in 1973 in Spain, in Madrid, by a group of entrepreneurs who felt that in a time of the French dictatorship, when we're going to be having an opening to the European Union, we need to create a business class of people that know what they're doing in business and whatnot. And the school quickly ramped out, and I'll study the details, but we quickly got on to become one of the best business schools in the world. Uh, we have MBAs, executive MBAs, masters in finance programs, etc. But we branched out from there. And I'll quickly tell you about that in a second. We have all of the accreditations required to be a top business school in the world, etc. And I'll quickly tell you about the schools in the But some of the things that make our school different were very diverse. We have over 125 families on campus every year. No joke. I mean, I'm a Canadian from Turkey that was studying there. I had classmates from Kathmandu and Mozambique. It was quite incredibly diverse. Uh, and 60% of our students are studying non-business degrees. One thing to just emphasize, we're not a Spanish business school, we're an international business school in Spain. 90% of our international students study in English, so it's not Spanish. Uh, networks around the world, entrepreneurs, it is something that we need to try and foster there. We have a large percentage of our alumni that are entrepreneurs, 25% in fact. And every you know, day of the week, there's various entrepreneurial classes, events, conferences going on school. And I won't bore you with that. Uh, on time. Innovation, we have a lot of online programs. So online architectural management programs, online design programs. And so this is what some classes actually look like. Right? I mean, these are your classmates all around the world. The professors talk in a room like this. So innovation is quite important for us. I'll skip through this. I'll just tell you about the schools. This is the business school which I told you about before. We also have a law school. And again, most of our programs are very focused on the business so it's international business law, legal tech, corporate compliance, taxation, etc. We have a school of international relations, and we have programs with the United Nations, so it's something that's really, again, business friendly, it's not so much academic uh, international relations. School of Architecture and Design, and these are some of the courses that we offer at the master's level, you can see in here. Uh, architectural management which is a blended program, so it's partly online, partly face-to-face -face in Madrid, so you can continue with your career. Uh, we have strategic space design and our real estate development course. And Edgar Hoja, as he talks, he'll tell you more about it, but he is the director of the bachelor's degree in design. We also have a whole other university specializing in undergraduate degrees, which I'm reporting with. Then we have the School of Human Sciences and Technology with big data programs, cybersecurity, all these sort of things. Campus life, I won't bore you with all this, but it's in Madrid again. Yeah. Uh, Madrid is a pretty awesome place to study. I've studied in several countries, including Istanbul. I was the third exchange student ever at Coach University in 2001. And Istanbul is a pretty awesome place to study, and so is Madrid. And I think people often leave that out when they're considering school uh, a wonderful place to study. Uh, admissions. If you want to know more about admissions, I'd be happy to tell you about it. I'll give you my contact information in a minute. Uh, we do offer a lot of financial services, so I mean, 40% of the students do receive financial aid, and please bear in mind that uh, we understand Turkey is not uh, Germany in terms of purchasing power these days, so we're much more generous when it comes to scholarships when dealing with uh, Turkish students. Uh, careers are very important for us because it determines how we do in our rankings. We do everything we can to make sure people play some good jobs afterwards. Uh, yeah, I mean, as I say, we're consistent with the top business schools in the world, the top universities, and how well people place is an important part of that, so we put a lot of importance in that. 
that's me. Talk to me anytime. Uh, I'm always available for coffee, chai, whichever. Thanks. <laughs> Without any further ado, I'll get you at your own here. And sorry to bore you with the, the intro here. Now's the fun stuff. Huh? <laughs> Thank you. Hello, everybody. We just changed the presentation. Yeah, it's the same. Water, internet, 
services if you think about you know convenience store yeah to buy milk at night you know you forgot the milk how do you do this because here if you have a convenience store here you're actually servicing thousands of families just one block away you're providing service for thousands of those families which makes this uh, this business profitable as well yeah schools you know if you're gonna set up a school and you put a school here you know, this is going to be servicing, you know, all this area, you know, because kids go walk to the school, just there, yeah? With the American model, you cannot have that, no? because, I mean, the school, to make it profitable, you have to put it in the habit of there, no? <laughs> Yes, and, and then you have to drive the, the kids over there, and then take them back, and all the stuff, you know, like, a school or a convenience store, or take the car to bring the milk at night in your, your, your car battery, yeah? So we're going to focus a little bit on this model, which, for me, you know, is the perfect model of city. You know, because make the city more lively. As well, you know, you go down, you encounter people. You know, walk. You actually walk the street and you encounter with people. You know, you sit, you have a coffee, you talk to the neighbor. You actually understand. You know, the the, the butcher. It's just across the street. So you go up there and buy buy the, the meat for uh, your meal in the afternoon or whatever. So this, for me, you know, is, is it my the, my ideal city. Maybe you're you're not completely agree with me, but uh, you don't have to. But this is for me the ideal uh, model of a, of a functioning city. Right? So, for example, uh, the, the example we are seeing, you know, this is Austin. I forgot to mention, this is Austin, Texas. Yes? And this is Barcelona, of course. No? Uh, the number of inhabitants per square kilometers, for example, the density, that's the density, that's how you measure density in a city. You know, here in Austin, it's 1,000 people per square kilometer. That means that only 1,000 people live in one square, square kilometer. Besides uh, the 15, 15,000 people that they live in Barcelona. So that makes this, this model much more efficient. So this, as I told you, you know, this is the kind of city I like. I like to live in you know, a live city, a lively city, a city that functions. And actually a city where you can move in two wheels. Yes, because you know, the, 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 car, the, the, the vehicle of the future has two wheels. You know that. You then know this. Well, the people of the future has two wheels, and this is uh, where Van Moon comes in. No? Van Moon. Let me tell you the story of Van Moon. You know, Van Moon is, is, uh, is the story of these two guys. There are two brothers. It's called Taco and uh, Taco, and Tile, uh, Kyle, uh, and Tile, Caroline. Yes. There are two brothers. They're brothers, and they went to study uh, product design. They studied product design in, in Amsterdam. After they finished their career, they went, they moved on and started working for uh, some companies, some uh, with some design companies. And uh, after a couple of years, they decided to set up their own company. Yeah, they wanted to build their own company, and they were like me obsessed with this idea of using the two vehicle, two two wheel bicycle, two wheel vehicle to move around the city. Yes, which is what they call the urban commuter bike. Yeah, the urban commuter bike is a vehicle understood to move around in the city as a means of transportation. Yeah? It's, not as a, it's not for fun, it's not for leisure, it's not for sports. It's just to move yourself within the city. They started the company 10 years ago. Uh, at the beginning it was called Just Move. Uh, but they have a, a little uh, legal issue with another company that was doing the lights for bicycles, which had the same name. So they have to change the name. And they call it that move, you know, with some more Dutch. And then for the marketing thing, working much better. You know, what's this idea? Doing that. So basically, the, the goal of, of this uh, new company, set up company was exactly this: helping the people that want to move around in the city in a vehicle with two wheels in an effortless uh, condition. This is of a company. This is of a company for being uh, for today's world, right? Today we live in a globalized world, in a hyper-connected world, in a hybrid world. This globalized world, you know, it's like everything is connected, where everything is connected. It's not connected only physically, but we are connected, you know, digitally all the time. You know, these 20 centimeters that separate me from my digital reel, from my physical reel, these 20 centimeters are the most important 20 centimeters that you will get. And yeah, because this is the area where everything is happening right now. Yeah, these 20 centimeters, everything is happening there. And it's so interesting. Right? So any decent company today has to work with this idea of the hybrid condition. Yeah? I don't know if you have been there, you recognize this. Yes, this is a uh, central station, Amsterdam. Yes, Amsterdam is uh, arguably, you know, the capital uh, bicycle of the world. Yes, this idea of 
using the bicycle as a means of transportation had been on the, on the, Dutch, uh, the Dutch mindset for a while. And it has to do with a lot of reasons. Why, why do you, which reasons do you think? Why the Dutch are like, so keen on using the bicycle as a means of transportation? Sorry? It's a flat city. Sorry? It's a flat city. It's a, it's a very flat, yes, it's a, it's a very flat city. You know, the country, you know, the whole country is completely flat. But what else? Health. It's health, but I think health is more kind of a byproduct of that. It's health, I mean, yes, but I think it's more sort of a byproduct. No? But yeah, yes. it's very interesting. It's Efficiency. It's very efficient, no? Because you have all this traffic, you know, being a bicycle is very, very efficient. But what else? You know, there's a physical condition, you know, the Dutch has. That which is, you know, all this uh, infrastructure we were talking before. No? They build all these car. Have you been in Amsterdam? Have you stepped in one of these? You know, looking at your map. It's a lot of fun, right? Yeah. You know, you get scream, you get shout, like, oh! They are super polite. <laughs> those, those people are usually super polite, you know, unless you step on this, you know, and uh, you step on the, the, the bike, bike path. Yeah. So, yeah, they have this infrastructure. But besides that, you know, there's this condition that I like very much. You know, in my classes I always insist, we designers, we work for people. Yes, we design for people. Yes, and the people condition, the human condition is very important on this. Why? Because it's a cultural thing, right? From the very young age, you know, you're confronted to this idea of, yeah, if you have to go, you have to go in a bicycle. You go to a school in a bicycle, from a very young age, you know, your father takes you, as long as you can drive yourself, you can start driving yourself. Doesn't matter your age, you know, you still drive a bicycle. Doesn't matter if you have to go there, you have to go there. Doesn't matter if it's raining, if you're going to a party, you have to go there. If you're wearing heels, you have to go there. The usual way is the bicycle. It's the, the more natural way of transportation. Yes? But not all the cities are like Amsterdam. As you were pointing out, Amsterdam is completely flat. You know, the whole country is completely flat. Not all the cities. So when they, when they start designing, this bicycle, they start thinking like, okay, we want to make this product a global product. Yeah, not only just for, for the Netherlands, but we want to make it a global company. So we have to address a couple of challenges. Yes, this idea of not all the seats are flat. Yeah, we have hills. Uh, another of the challenges that we're facing is like, okay, what about safety? You know? When you drive a bicycle in a city that doesn't have the infrastructure, like uh, Amsterdam, you have to be very aware, you know? so you have to, you know, when you when you ride a bicycle, like a city bicycle has to be like that. You have to ride like that because you have to be very aware. You remember the bicycle, the track bicycles, you go like that. For the mountain bike, you go like that because because of the, the movement. But in a, in a city bicycle, you have to go like that you know? because you have to be aware of what everything is happening. You know? Maybe a child is crossing, the bus is coming, whatever. You have to be very aware. And of course, security, yeah, because you don't want to come back. To so you find your bicycle like this, no? So these three aspects were the main, the main uh, goals that they were trying to achieve. Designing what we call is the, uh, this is the, the, the product we're going to talk about. is the electric 5S. Yeah. So bicycle is called the Van uh, electric 5S. And the mission, have you seen? Ah, uh, they decided to go for an electric, for an electric bicycle. Yeah. It's like okay, we go for an electric bicycle. But have you seen an electric bicycle? Yes? How they are? Really cool. Really cool. <laughs> usually they're not. No? It's like they're horrible. Why? Because usually they are like, it's just, they just take a normal bicycle and they put a motor in. And then you have to, for the motor, you have to have a battery. And they put a battery. And to connect the motor to the battery, you have to have a cable. So they put a cable. So at the end, you end up with this ugly, super ugly Frankenstein thing that is, they call it an electric bicycle. So they decided, like, okay, why don't we design you know, a bicycle for this kind of person that wants to move around in the city with the bicycle as a vehicle, you know, with style. With designers, they have to do something with brain, of course. Yeah. It's like, okay, well, let's focus on that. Huh? So basically, uh, right now, they have this the lineup right now for, for van moves. They have two models of bicycles. They started with one, but they decided to make it uh, make one smaller for, for uh, smaller people. Not so tall people. So right now they have two, and they have the electric version. You can buy the electric version or the with, with no with no motor. We're gonna focus on this one, you know, the electrified S. Ah, disclosure, very important. I don't work for Batman, okay? <laughs> because everybody tells me like I have to work for 
for a month now because they want to sell their bicycles. No, no, I don't work for a month. It's just a case I developed because I found it really interesting to, to express this as a way of you know promoting uh, design. You know what design can get, what design can be. And talking about design, we're going to focus on the design of bicycles. Yes. This is, uh, as I told you, this is the Van Gogh Electric Fighter X. It retails for almost 3,000 euros. And uh, yes, it's super cool. Yes, you're going to be super cool riding one of these bicycles. Marketing is doing the job. It's really amazing, you know, riding a bicycle. But we're designers, so let's focus on the design part. Yeah? In the design part, when they start designing it, it's like, okay, they said, let's focus on a concept to develop this new bicycle. And the concept was integration. Yeah. Let's integrate everything you know, because it's amazing. Remember the Frankenstein bicycle I told you before? You know, this idea of pieces coming in and uh, all this mess. They wanted to, to, to integrate everything, but the, the something is like, okay, how do we integrate? What if, after, after, apart from the wheels, you know, what is the most defining characteristic of a bicycle? What would you say? Body. Yeah? Body. The body, yes, the, 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 the body, no? They, they call it the frame. This is called the frame, not this triangle. Actually, if you see this, this is like the icon. You know, when, when we're in the road, you see a, a bicycle, it's this, exactly like this. No? How do you draw a bicycle? Two wheels and a triangle. It's exactly like this. So they focus on the frame, exactly. The frame. So they said, okay, let's integrate the design of the bicycle within the frame. Let's integrate it. No? So they started with the, with the cables. No? All the cables go into the frame, so you don't see them very, you know, of course you can see a little bit, but this part you have to be there. But once you get to a point, they get into the frame, so you don't see them. Yeah. They integrated the lighting system, you know. We have been having bicycles for 200 years, and you still go to, have to go to the shop and buy a light and put it in your bicycle and pull the cable, you know, to run the cable all the way there. Huh? So they say, well, let's integrate it, no? Since we, uh, safety is one of our issues, in the city you have to be safe, no? So let's integrate, you know, the front and the back. The front and the back of the of the, of the lighting system is integrated into the frame as well. It's like, okay, yes. So you get this very, very clean, you know, with no cables at all, very clean design. Uh, they put the, the motor, actually the motor is inside the wheel, it's inside the front wheel, and the cable goes inside the frame. And the batteries, because you have to have some batteries from the motor, of course, the batteries are there, inside the frame. So everything is inside the frame, everything is integrated. So you get this idea of super clean uh, object, you know, super clean product that actually won the Red Bull Design Award. There are many designers in the house. Yes, how many designers are we today? Architects? Yes. You know the Red Dot Award design? Red Dot Award is like the Oscars for uh, designers. You know? So they won the Red Dot Award design for, for this bicycle. Up to here, it's very important to make a pose. You know, because up to here, what they did is what you expect a designer to do. You know? Like, okay, you design a bicycle, it has to be cool, it has to be working, it has to be nice, whatever. You know? It's what designers do. But they didn't stop here. And this is, that's why I choose this, this, this example. Because I think it's a perfect example of what designers can do beyond what is expected. Yeah? Remember the convenience store. Yes, we forgot the milk and we have to go to the supermarket to get some milk. You take your bicycle, you go to the supermarket, you arrive there, and what do you do? Lock it. You lock it, no? Yeah, because you don't want the 3,000 uh, bicycle to be stolen. So you lock it. So they start thinking, like, okay, we are going to have a bicycle that needs to be locked. Why don't we think about that? And we design with this in mind, no? So basically they design this little hole here. Can you see this little hole? It's integration as well. But this little hole, what it does, you know, it connects the lock of the bicycle to the bicycle. You have to destroy the bicycle to take it out of it. Yeah. So it's integration as well. But it's the step the beyond. Yeah, it's not only making the product, but thinking how this product is going to be used. But people, you love the bicycle. Actually, and since we are a um, 20th century company, you know, this 20 centimeters hybridization we were talking about, you can actually connect your phone to the bicycle. So when you arrive with the, with the, with the, with the bag of milk and uh, some chocolate ice cream, yes, <laughs> chocolate ice cream and things like that, you arrive to the, to the, to the, to the bicycle, it unlocks automatically. No? Because it knows that you are near, so it unlocks automatically. So you can lock it and lock it from, from the phone. And this is because they have an integrated 
GPS and GSM system inside the bicycle, which is the frame. You know, how you're gonna be used. This. Yes, because actually with this location, remember when you left your bicycle in Central Station in Amsterdam, I do not remember where your bicycle is, you can find it. Not because of the what I left it. I was like, oh yes, it's over there. No. So you were all there. But with this location system, they started thinking again, and they were having a little problem with the idea of People think that uh, 3,000 euros is a lot of money now. Yeah? It's like, well, 3,000 euros is a lot of money now yeah? to have a bicycle, to have it there. So many people weren't buying this bicycle because they thought that 3,000 euros was a lot of money. So they suddenly be like, hey, since we have this GPS location system, why don't we use it to generate a service? So we're not talking only about the product, not only about the use, but actually thinking about what services can we provide that help to sell this product. And they came up with this idea, which is called the one more piece of mind. Oh, and I forgot, I need to... There's this, this, this sound here. Okay, can I connect this to the, to the computer? No. Anyhow, yeah. sorry, I forgot to put the sound. Yes? Ah, it's because it's the Apple TV. Not okay, I think it's going to be done, yes. So basically, what they did, they came with this idea of, of the bike hunter. Yes, they provide the, they the service called Bike Hunter. Basically, the Bike Hunter is that when we arrive, to, you go to the supermarket, you buy your milk, you buy your chocolate ice cream, you arrive to the supermarket with the bicycle, and your bicycle is not there. It's like, shit, what do I do? You take your phone and you click on, on one button, but this button activated Bike Hunter's recipe, which is not exactly this one, but I'm going to show you what it is. It's gonna be a tricky, a tough job here. And what do you see? Nothing. <laughs> Sebastian, you are selling guns. Holy crap. Bike just moved. Let's do it. This is it. Huh? It's definitely a place. <laughs> You see these sirens as well. This is how it works. Huh? So basically they invented this service which actually provides you with the them, you know, they actually recover 70% of the bicycles. They, they can recover from this system. Thank you. 70%, which is not bad. Huh? And especially they can offer the warranty. If you go with the meal and the, and the chocolate ice cream, you arrive there and your bicycle is not there and you click on the bad move uh, rescue team system. And they don't rescue your bicycle. If they don't rescue your bicycle in 10 days, they give you another one for free. I see, I see a lot of smiles. Like, suddenly, 3,000 euros is like, wow! It's not that much money. No. It's like, well, oh, well, I can think about it. No? It's like, 3,000 euros? If I get my bike stolen, I can get another one for free. So it's this peace of mind warranty. That's why they call it peace of mind warranty. So it's, it's, it's really cool. So this is about this idea of you know, design is not only making things beautiful, yes? Design is not only making objects, you know? Because design is strategic, you know? Design is not execution, but actually strategy. You know, we can provide so much more than only beautiful objects, yeah? So we have been, let's just make a quick recap. You know, we have been on this idea of what a designer, traditional designer makes, you know? It's like a product or something like that. But how this product is going to be used, you know, in the context, is very important as well, you know. What interaction the user is going to have with this object that I can make it easier, you know, after I sell my money. How these services can help, you know, the strategy of the product we're doing to sell it better. Yes, or provide the user a better experience. You have a small, a small uh, recap of the business, yes. I know most of you are designers, but it's okay, you know, it's, it's is healthy to talk about this. Yes. Remember, this is the, this is the, the, the bicycle. They have uh, they sell it online. You know, most of the sales are made online. You know, with a, they have a, you know, with a very decent web page. What they do? Uh, basically, the development of this uh, bicycle. Because remember, this was a small company. 
that was just starting, you know. It's just, it's quite young, it's only 10 years old. When they were starting, you know, they have to develop all this with the help of many other companies, you know, through a, a, a series of strategic partnerships. Like, for example, with Abus. Abus makes a, is one of the best makers of, of locks, of bicycle of locks. So they work with Abus. They work with Philips for, for, the, for the lighting system. And they work with Vodafone for the GPS and GSM system. Yeah. So through this strategic partnership, they actually help to develop a better product without it having to invest all the money on research and development. They have some brand stores, you know, in one of the most uh, important cities in, in, in the world that they, they are interested to be in, you know. They have uh, all these, they have like eight or nine shops, I don't remember, I say eight or nine, something like that. Uh, but of course, what they want to do, they want to sell online. Yes, hello, thanks for coming. <laughs> And, uh, yes, you want to sell online, right? 90% of our sales want to be online. But how do you put this in the hands of your clients, of the customers? You know, I go online, I go there, I take my credit card, I put in the numbers, I click OK, and then what happens? How do you put this in the hands of your customer? Through a box. A box, of course, yes. A box. You put in a box. <laughs> <laughs> it's yes. You put in a box. But remember, we are a 21st century company. We want to be a global company. We want to be an international company. We want to be a hybrid company. And you're spending 3,000 euros in a bicycle. Yes. You don't want to have the IKEA experience. Yeah. <laughs> to have all the pieces that are coming, trying to find out, you know, where, which piece is what, blah, blah, blah. So basically, what you do, you said to put this bicycle in that box, yeah, and to make it more efficient. Basically, what you do is like you lose the, 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 the handle, you know, you lose the screw, and the handle goes like loose, and you take off the pedals. So, the box that we have is a very thin box, it's very large and it's very tall, but it's very thin, yeah, it's not super heavy, it's just like uh, some uh, 90 kilos or something like 19 kilos, yeah, it's not super heavy, but it's a very strange shape. Box, yeah? This is the box. So let's keep the box in mind, you know, for the next steps. Uh, how are we doing time-wise? Yes, we have time. Yeah, yeah. I can show you the unboxing video, you know, because everybody loves unboxing videos. You know, unboxing videos. Yeah, let's have a look at the unboxing video. Oh, hello you. Congratulations on your new Van Mof. So you've started unboxing already. Why don't you unbox along with us? Remember, right pedal turns clockwise. That's it. Left pedal turns counterclockwise. Good work. it. And don't forget the... Perfect! <clears throat> if you need more help, just head to support.vanmof.com the band of electrified S, yeah? So far, we have been going through the design phase, how the business is done, you know, we have to recap some, maybe some of the competitive advantages of, of the product just for you to know. Like, for example, yes, it has to sell ready to write, the IKEA experience we were talking about, you know, you don't want to have. Uh, in case you don't know what your right and your left is, you know, well, you always can have a 24-7 helpline that can help you with that. Uh, we want to direct sale only, you know, to save the intermediaries. 
to make a better, better business. The first business model was only one model, you know, only one model, one size fits all. They changed a little bit uh, last year, and they have two models right now. But uh, they include the shipping uh, worldwide is free. Doesn't matter which country you are, you know, you buy the bicycle, you get it for free, the shipping is free. You have the regular uh, two year warranty. And if you don't like the bicycle, in 30 days you can return it. Yes, if you don't like it, you can just return it, because it's nice. This is my most electrified days. But we are here because it was a problem. Yeah, it has to, I mean, it has to be a problem, otherwise it wouldn't be a, a, a case. No? The problem was precisely with this shipping part. You know? When you put the thing in the box, you close the box, and you leave, this box leaves the factory. What happens there? They started running some polls, you know, some questionnaires with the customers about satisfaction. You know? They love the product, they love the experience, they love the web page, they love everything, but they were having a lot of complaints about the experience of the box arriving to their houses. Yeah. They tried to change companies, they used, they used the different ones, and they discovered that mainly this was because of Ace Ventura. Do you know Ace Ventura? Mm -hmm. Yes? You, you don't know Ace Ventura? You don't know? Let me introduce you to Ace Ventura so you can think. This was this uh, this is Ace Ventura, so you know Ace Ventura. Yeah. Good. So what happened with Ace Ventura? No, it's like yes, you have also something online. Have you had an experience like this? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> well, not not exactly, but something something similar. No? Because this is like, for example, the work of Ace Ventura. You know, and uh, to document the work of Ace Ventura, it exists this page. You know, it's called Don't Drop My Package. That one. And you can go in and see, you know, Ace Ventura making. Uh, those best, you know, like throwing uh, boxes and uh, destroying packages. Or we can we can have the look of, of this this uh, this work. The work of this artist is called Wallet Besley. Wallet Besley, what he does, he builds these boxes of glass, exactly the same size and shape of the Federal Express boxes. He puts it inside and he ships these to the galleries all over the world. So each piece of art, you know, is perfectly personalized by Ace Ventura. So every single piece of art is completely different. It's a work of Ace Ventura, it's a collaboration between Ace Ventura and the, the artist. No, it's a joke, so joke, so far. You know, it's like, yeah, they were trying to do this idea of, yeah, we want to give our customers the best experience, but it is out of our reach. Yes? What can we do? Because, yeah, it's not up to us. We change companies, we change companies many times, so we don't know exactly what to do. Yeah? What can we do? It's like, yeah. It's a bit complex, no? Because in the past, you know what we were facing? The problems we were facing, they were very simple, quite novel, and very independent. But the problems now, the problems we face today, they are very complex. Yeah, they are very fussy. And they are very interdependent. Yeah. So, what can we do with these problems, you know? And I say we, because I just appointed you, you know, as part of the team to solve this problem. You know? How can we solve this problem? I'm gonna give you uh, one minute to think about it. Yes? And share it. Yeah. We change companies, so what can we do? I know the answer. So you know the answer? Ah, oh, shut up. <laughs> 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 okay. What can we do? Change the material to plastic. Change the water? Change the material of the bicycle. Change the material? Yes, that could be an option. Sounds very expensive, but that, that's an option. Remember, we are starting company. You know, we are a struggling company. That's an option. Let's see, let's keep it there. In fact, it's an option. It's too expensive. It's doable. Maybe we need a lot of resources. But yeah, it's an option. What else? No. That's okay. You know, we have this problem. You know, we have this this that gets destroyed because. Ace Ventura, not this box, gets destroyed every time by Ace Ventura because it's, a, it, it's not super heavy, you know, but, but it's a weird shape. Yeah? And every month, you know, every month the polls came and they checked the polls product 10, experience 10, web page 10, uh, shipping. They were failing on the shipping all the time because they were having a lot of complaints from customers. Because you don't want to have that experience, you know, when you spend 3,000 euros in a company, which 
it's supposed to be you know, uh, contemporary and modern. You don't expect that from that kind of company. No? But it's out of hands. What can we do? Every month they were facing this problem and they were like, ah, oh, Jesus Christ, what can we do? You know, we try to change companies. We can afford to make the bicycle uh, out of plastic. Uh, it's like, what can we do? What can we do? And then one day, you know, they were having a tea together uh, the, the, of the, the two brothers, remember? I introduced you. And then Taco said, I'm so fed up with this problem. You know, we're having this problem. What can we do? And Taco said, he's like, well, wait. There is this other problem. Ah, because, because Tiles was complaining, that was complaining. Now it's because of the box, because it's too big, and it's too difficult to handle, and the Ace Ventura is making the, the, the things worse because he can handle the box. And Taco said, like, no, 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 that's not true. You know, because there is this other product that has a box which is very similar, and they don't have that problem. Which product is that? TVs. TVs, yes, of course. Huh? Because big TVs, remember big TVs, they have this huge, they weigh the same, the shape is exactly the same, and they don't have that problem. You know, why? Because Ace Ventura goes there, and they don't want to mess with the, with the TV. You know? So basically, Taco said, it's like, okay, why don't we try something? It's not going to cost us a lot of money. Why don't we try this? <laughs> you know what happened? You know how, how much do you think this costs to change? It? The implementation costs nothing, no? literally nothing, because of like, whatever. No? And you know what happened next month with the polls? Eighty-five percent of the complaints disappeared, just like that. Just like that. Eighty-five percent, just because of this. Yeah. You change the box, 85%, your problem is almost gone. Yeah, of course, you always have to have a small little problem, but 15% is nothing compared. Yeah? So basically, yeah, the box was this huge thing, I can you imagine, you know? Everybody talking about the box because when this came out on the internet, you might, you might have seen it, you know? It's like everybody was talking about it, and it was such a big deal, but actually, they make, you know, the Easter egg is, you know, this little joke that they make. If you go to the Batman page, and you click buymove.com slash box, you can buy the box. You can actually buy the box on Quasso Famous. And they give you a bicycle for free. You know, the box which comes with a bicycle for free. It's not an electric one, yeah? it's not a tree transfer. So, yeah, what's next, you know? What's the recap of this, what we were thinking about here? You know, design is about strategy. Design is not only execution. Design is solving problems with a creative mindset, you know? Try to understand the problem and the complexities of the world that we live in and providing solutions that think and that are out of the box. Yeah. I hope you keep that in mind, you know? Design is problem solving problems. Problem solving problem. It's problem solving, sorry. <laughs> Design is problem solving, yeah? It's not just making things beautiful. Yeah. And that's remember as well that design, good design, is good business. Oops, sorry. Thank you very much. <laughs>